Talking about the special election in Georgia now heading for a runoff in June. But there's another big race with national implications heating up in the state of Montana. Trace Gallagher is live with more on that. Montana. Montana, yes, Sandra. Montana's seat in the House of Representatives is now up for grabs because Republican Ryan Zinke left to become President Trump's interior secretary. Trump also easily won Montana in the election, and considering a Democrat hasn't held Montana's only House seat since 1997, it was kind of assumed that a Republican would replace Zinke. In fact, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee isn't exactly pouring a lot of money and resources into that race, but that could all change very soon thanks to a a Montana folk musician turned politician named Rob Quist. According to local newspapers, the 69-year-old Quist, who's running for the House seat as an open, land-loving populist, is filling up campaign events and moving up in the polls. He's even getting support on the trail from Bernie Sanders. Here's Rob Quist doing a bit of campaigning before singing. Watch. Bullies are not just on the playground. They're everywhere. They're everywhere through life. And um, and so, uh, so this song, but kind of that's the way it got its roots. But then I realized I didn't really have to change too much of it to be a campaign song for me too. So, so what, what's it called? It's called uh, "I Will Stand Up for You." Okay. Right. Quist is running against Greg Gianforte, who recently lost the Montana's governor's race. Gianforte, who made millions in technology, spent $5 million funding his bid for governor and will also fund his own house race. Gianforte is from New Jersey, but bills himself as a true Montana conservative who's even been endorsed by the NRA and says he is willing to go after Obamacare. Watch him. Myself and my opponent in this race have very different views on what we should do. I've been very clear. I believe we need to repeal Obamacare and replace it with something that actually reduces premiums. The special election for Montana's only House seat is May 25th. Sandra. All right. Thank you very much, Trace Gallagher. For more on this, Chris Plant and Leslie Marshall, uh, both are syndicated radio talk show hosts. Leslie is a Fox News contributor. Uh, I'll start with you first, Chris. What lessons can be learned from that Georgia special election? Uh, that throwing $8.3 million at a congressional race with mostly outside money doesn't necessarily guarantee victory. Even with a full court press from the news media, from the New York Times, the New Yorker magazine, CBS News, CNN, everyone full court press even the atlanta journal constitution on uh pushing the democrat in this case ossoff and uh, and still they weren't able to pull out look they didn't just throw the kitchen sink at this they threw the entire kitchen at this and they and they they rolled the dice they were going to pull this out for weeks and weeks there was a campaign and still they weren't able to pull it out and i suspect that that does not bode well for them in uh, the june 20th actual election. And then, Leslie, we look ahead to the state of Montana, uh, where there are national implications there as well. Well, I think Montana is very different than Georgia, in which I totally yeah. disagree with Chris. No big surprise that it was very <laughs> successful in a win. In Montana, I don't think Democrats are taking this race seriously, and I think they should. Uh, the fact that we don't see the DNC and other Democratic organizations putting any money or running any ads in this race in Montana is evident that they consider this a, a winless uh, race. But if you look at uh, this uh, Democrat, uh, who is a folk singer, and he is a Montana uh, native, of guy who was very well liked by the people he started showing up with 70 people there he has hundreds now so there certainly is uh, some momentum and it is very grassroots he doesn't have the type of money that his opponent does this is a very red state i would be lying to say that i would think that right. you know he's he's going to win by a huge margin but the fact that we're even having these conversations <laughs> in places like montana and georgia with the number of people and the amount of support and the percentages mm -hmm. we're seeing for democrats is definitely a referendum on our president it? All right. And you're both talking about money involved here. And if you look yeah. at some of these, uh, the Senate Democrat incumbents running for re-election uh, in states, President Trump won last November. Look at some of the big money that we're seeing there. I mean, Joe Manchin, 556,000. Joe Donnelly, 1.3 million. <laughs> these numbers grow all the way to Senator uh, Claire McCaskill, $2.8 million. There's uh, obviously some, some big money being thrown at these, at these races. Yeah, uh, you know, and honestly, look, $8.3 million in this race that nobody was paying attention to. The Democrats decided to make this something of a litmus test. And Leslie, if this is a win, you called it a win. If losing is winning, then I'd like to see the Democrats continue to win like this. 
Yes, and the Republicans split the field between 11 different candidates. So they came up with 48.2 percent of the vote, while the Democrat got 48.1 percent of the vote. But that was with the full court press, all the money. Uh, are you really all the California, New York, and Massachusetts people that gave the first time around are going to give again the second time around when it's much less likely that they're going to pull out the win? Again, it's a loss for the Democrats. They, they put everything in here, uh, and they lost. So uh, if that's a win, keep winning. And, of course, Democrats continue to like to talk Russia, Russia, Russia. Right, Leslie? And uh, uh, Congressman Adam Schiff had something to say about the Russia investigation and where that's headed. Yeah. Listen to this. When can we expect another yeah, exactly. hearing from your committee? Well, uh, you know, I'm happy to report that our committee is really back on track. We have a new Republican lead, Mike Conaway of Texas. Uh, I think he's a very serious guy. We've had a number of good conversations since uh, he took the Republican reins. So where is this going to go? Chris? Oh, well, I, th I, look, I think it's I, going to. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, I, I look, I look, uh, I look forward to getting to the bottom of this, too. I don't think there's going to be a lot there from the uh, Trump camp. I think if there was anything there, it would have been leaked long ago. I'd like to look into the Clinton campaign, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton's involvement there. And if I may, just a departure for a moment, there was another tie to the Trump campaign and Vladimir Putin uh, on the South Lawn of the White House a few minutes ago and that the owner of the Patriots, Robert Kraft, had one of his Super Bowl rings stolen from him by Vladimir Putin. True story. Okay. <laughs> Leslie, back on track, as the committee apparently is, according to Co Congressman Schiff. Um, he says that Devin Nunes cast a cloud over the investigation. Uh, look, it, when you look at what's happening on both sides of the aisle, a lot of money being thrown to bring this full circle, being thrown at these key races, um, this continues to be a bit of a cloud over the president. Well, it's not just a cloud over the president. Polls show a majority of Americans want the truth. They want to know what's going on. And there is a lot going on. I mean, Mike Flynn asked for immunity. You don't ask for immunity unless you need immunity. And you don't get refused immunity unless the people refusing, which in this case is the FBI, has bigger fish to fry and doesn't need your information and testimony. We do know there is a dossier. We do know that. We do know, do know Mr. Steele is willing to speak to people in the United States, fearful to come to the United States. We do do know there were FISA warrants, especially for Mr. Carter. I'm sorry, but if it looks like, again, if it sounds like a duck, it's got webbed feet, it's a duck. Something's going to come right. of this. I don't think it's a grassy knoll. I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. All right, well, the words from the White House yeah, today on, on the state of things, uh, Sean Spicer saying, hey, look, look back to November. We did pretty well. He said, I'm very confident about the state of the Republican Party. Uh, Chris Leslie, good to see both of you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.